Are you willing to become a god, no matter the cost, even if it means you are no longer human? Shin Megami Tensei V asks this question, and the story deals with this in an interesting way, even if it has most of the hallmarks of previous games in its dungeon-crawling, demon-collecting franchise. You've got your law, your chaos, your neutral. You meet two dudes at the beginning of the game, and instead of building a budding friendship with them and talking ad nauseum, you go your separate ways. Instead of your party being made up of other people, it is composed of you and a set of demons. Those demons range from various mythological and religious figures like Odin and Parvati, to folklore like the ever-endearing Mothman. You recruit demons through negotiation, and those negotiations are so slapstick and comical that they're always the most memorable parts of these games. One of the most appealing things about the demons in Shin Megami Tensei is that they aren't just creatures bearing the names of folklore, but they actually feel like the genuine article. From how they speak to the added lore, great care was put into making every one of them authentic, with some boasting versions of their origin that are amalgamations of many different interpretations. You can customize your demons through fusion, sacrificing them to make stronger, better demons. Party building in Shin Megami Tensei is so rewarding because no two demons are the same, and you'll likely be perusing the game with a different setup every time you play. Even your protagonist can be built however you wish. This is a far cry from games where equipment determines your stats, essentially meaning that everyone will have the exact same endgame build. This is the strong suit of Shin Megami Tensei, and this entry expands upon that with essences, which allow you to put almost any skill on your main character and change their affinities. Know you're going up against something that's strong with ice, slap a Jack Frost essence on you to become immune, and destroy them. Like other hallmarks of the monster collection subgenre, filling up the compendium is a fun pastime, but unlike other games, you're filling that compendium so that you have fodder to make stronger, better demons. You should never grow attached to a demon and should always be expanding your party, which is something about SMT that I know turns some people away. Luckily for them, essences allow you to transfer skills to demons as well, so you can keep a demon current with the state of the game that you're at without needing to chain fusions anymore. Of course, there's also incentive to fuse those demons as well, as the more you use a demon, the stronger the one you fuse from them will be. But if you really do grow attached to a demon, with essences and stat increasing incense, you may just be able to keep it for the entire game. I kept Eden and Cleopatra in my party for most of the game, and they were surprisingly resilient. Demon collecting takes a backseat to battling. The combat is a spin on the press turn system found in 3 and both 4 games and it has its own unique mechanics to set it apart. You have four turns and can expand that to eight with skillful play. Hitting weaknesses and getting crits gives you an extra turn, and missing or hitting an enemy with something that it nulls, deflects, or drains takes off turns. New to five, passing two turns doesn't use up a turn anymore. Instead, it continues to add a half turn, which makes for some crazy tactics that you can use to decimate even the strongest of foes in a single turn. Also new to this game are Magatsuhi Limit Breaks, which have different properties such as making all attacks powered up, always do criticals, or some powerful attacks that you can only do with the bar filled. All these mechanics combine into a battle system that lets you go hog wild and do the most broken strategies possible, making you feel like a god, which is very thematically appropriate for this entry. It's still the best turn-based combat in the entire genre, and a whole lot of fun. I would chain buffs with Eden, enemy nerfs with Cleopatra, pop off a Donum Gladi and a crit Magatsuhi skill, and just destroy the opposition. SMT has a history of being able to wipe your entire party out in one turn, especially if you fall asleep at the wheel or begin going through the motions. That is true here as well, but it is far less frequent. For me, it only happened when I did drift off and stopped paying attention. I actually zoned out quite a lot in my time with 5, because the game is quite easy on its default difficulty. Like a lot of new games, it is much easier than prior entries in the same series on normal. Hard mode helps a bit, and I'd recommend playing on it if you have experience with the series. Something like the spontaneity that the smirk added to 4 would have been appreciated. 
Smirk granted a temporary buff status to you or your enemy for using turns well, which granted combat a sense of dynamism. The game is a bit weaker of an experience with its absence. In my time with Shin Megami Tensei 5, while I had a mostly positive experience with the game, I kept mentally comparing it to 3 and 4 because, well, those games feel like they have the missing pieces that would make 5 a stronger game. So here's where I spill the beans, and I need to preface this by saying I'm a Shin Megami Tensei fan. I've played 3 and 4 countless times. I've actually played 1 and 2. I prefer the older Persona games. I bought the Fall of Man Premium Edition, so it brings me no amount of joy to say that Shin Megami Tensei 5 was disappointing. It feels like two-thirds of a really good game, and I can't bring myself to like it any more than I currently do. When I said at the beginning that Shin Megami Tensei was a dungeon crawler, well, I was holding back. This game isn't. There aren't that many dungeons this time around, in fact there are, uh, only two? Instead of dungeon crawling, the game opts for much more overworld exploration, though it thankfully doesn't bite the bullet and go full open world. I'm split on this approach. I'm not exactly a fan of open world design. And to be fair, a lot of the overworld is surprisingly linear. It reminds me a little bit of Dragon's Dogma, with how each area feels like different, smaller levels taped together. The world is split up into four sections of overworld, and there's been an amazing amount of effort put into making a ruined landscape populated with demons that will just sit around and chill. Like they were always hanging out there. It does a very good job at making a believable environment, and it is quite fun to just run around in. I'm not sure if this was worth the trade-off though, because getting lost in SMT dungeons was a big part of the fun. There only being two dungeons hurts because personally it feels like there should be more, or at least three. The first dungeon is excellent, no complaints here. There's platforming in Shin Megami Tensei now, and I think that's pretty cool. It's a natural extension of the scripted jumps you would do in 4. The second dungeon feels more like a middle dungeon rather than a last one, lacking a sense of finality or grandiosity, which is ironic given the context of what it is. The story, too, feels incomplete. I enjoyed the approach the story took with its forbidden knowledge angle. It is a novel approach to telling a biblical scale story, and the premise is compelling to an extent. I also enjoyed the winks and nods to SMT Nocturne, and how this game is essentially an alternate universe sequel to it. But the potential of the game is squandered due to how little story there is. Just when the game starts getting going, it's over. I was so pumped after reaching the middle of the game, only for the plot to barely go anywhere afterwards. Instead of a midpoint, it became more of a climax to the second act. Similarly, the end of the story is rushed to an extent that it doesn't feel like there is a third act. Like a chunk is missing somewhere there. Even the character development is rushed. 3 and 4 were much more character driven stories than 5 and, listen, going for a different approach is fine, but not if it fails to stick the landing. In 4, characters gradually changed on-screen, believably. In 3, they changed off-screen, believably. In 5, they change on-screen, unbelievably. It feels like there's something missing from a certain character's arc from how fast their personality changes. There's a throwaway line of dialogue explaining their shift, but that feels more like backfilling than a reasonable explanation. As far as the story is concerned, the hidden route feels the most fulfilling of the four, but the requirements for it are a little overly stiff. Not unlike the hidden route of Nocturne. I wouldn't be spoiling the existence of this route if not for the requirements being unclear, but I'll provide a little timestamp for people who want to skip the most minute of spoilers. We good? Okay. If you want to save yourself the heartache of getting true neutral, after you fight a big climactic boss at the end of the second dungeon, and are about to go through two big doors, um, don't. Double back and do just about everything. Oh, and uh, when given the choice to spare an important character, do that, since you can prematurely end a side questline if you do not. As long as you do all you need to before setting through those doors, you're good. Pick the neutral route, and you'll be given a choice between it and true neutral later. I did one thing out of order and got screwed. Uh, it was, uh, 
very frustrating. You have to complete almost every side quest in the game and kill a super boss to even have the liberty of reaching true neutral and seeing the final boss, instead of the game prematurely ending with the normal neutral route. I complain about needing to defeat the super boss, because on this particular route, the levels of the bosses you have to fight after that super boss will likely be 10 to 20 levels below you, so they become a joke. The final bosses of that route, which are the same as all the other routes, are locked behind fighting that super boss. So the fact that they couldn't make extra hard versions of them is just insane. Worse still, if you don't do everything in the correct order, you get the neutral ending, which is the worst in the game. You don't fight the final boss and it feels like a punishment and a slap to the face. Like, <laughs> you couldn't beat the super boss, LMAO. Even if you have beaten the super boss, I literally did the super boss after making my choice of ending and that locked me out of the true neutral ending, which the choice for only pops up after you make the choice. <laughs> Normal neutral leaves the story unfinished, having not wrapped up its remaining loose ends. If you mess up and don't have the choice for true neutral, I'm, I'm sorry. This game took around four years to make, and I know that they probably lost a lot of time in the interim due to circumstances beyond their control, but I can't help but feel that development priorities were misplaced. Perhaps it's because I don't care that the environments are more open, that I view them as a straight downgrade due to the strain that they no doubt put on development that could have been avoided if the levels were more segmented. I would have gladly traded one of the overworlds for another dungeon or more story. The game as it is, is a bit haphazardly paced, and lacking so much that I can't bring myself to enjoy it more, and I really feel obligated that I have to. I'm the SMT guy, I have to like it. It's the latest evolution of one of my favorite franchises. Why don't I like it more? I'm just not sure how to feel about this game, and I'm a little confused by the praise levied toward this game when it feels like a lackluster experience to me. Having just played through Nocturne again, I can't help but think that it has all the elements that 5 lacks. It had better pacing, more dungeons, better difficulty balance, stronger world building, and shocking story developments. Nocturne has its own faults as well, with some weak dungeons and a, a hard mode that is basically just CBT, but as a full package, there is more to chew on there than with Shin Megami Tensei 5. Here's a bit of a controversial idea. Nocturne felt complete with its original release, but even that got an expanded version, Maniacs. If 3 can get an expansion, why not 5? I really want Shin Megami Tensei 5 to get an enhanced version too, one that expands the story, adds some levels, and rebalances the difficulty. I know reselling a game with additional content is not exactly something people like about Atlas, but this game sorely needs more content. At least, if they add anything, I hope it's not another overworld, because that's the last thing this game needs. More content like what the Fiend DLC already adds is what I'm talking about. Story scenes, extra summons, tough boss fights. That's more of what I want. A human walks among us. Among us! I need to reiterate something here. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is not bad. I think it's a good game with a lot of problems, and it falls just short of greatness due to uneven pacing and lack of substantial story. What's there has so much potential, so when it didn't live up to it, I felt a bit saddened. If you want to get into the franchise, it's up to you what game you play first, but allow me to offer my advice. Are you okay with a really, really good RPG with fantastic gameplay and good world building that lacks a strong story, or a story more important to you? If it's the latter, I don't think this should be the first game in the series you play, because it's not a great sampler, and might lead you into thinking the entire series is like it when it's an outlier. 4 has the most standard story and best systems of the series, so that's a good entry point. If it has to be a Switch game, 3 is fantastic if you can handle some jank and a bit of obtuseness. 5 is a weird game that is nowhere near the intended middle ground between those two, instead falling somewhere outside the line as its own extreme. It's a new type of game that doesn't quite feel like a Shin Megami Tensei game, and I don't know how to feel about that. I just hope it can be improved for further entries if this is the formula they're sticking with, because the precedent 5 sets 
is not one that will last beyond one entry without change. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you very much to our patrons on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel and you like our content, Patreon is a great way to do that. It helps us make more content more regularly and finance videos like this one because I bought the premium Fall of Man edition, which was $120. And my wallet sure is hurting. <laughs> I hope you have a nice day and always remember to return to the source. Thank you.